seven o'clock by the clock in um, council chamber, so I'll call them into order. Adoption of the agenda 2.1, and I should like to um, request that 8.4 be moved to in camera for discussion, and then council can report out for a decision. As amended. Okay. Councillors uh, Torgerson and Blanchett and I wanted to add something. You want to add something as well? Go ahead. Um, an action item, the letter to UCM. Okay. So that'll be uh, Councillor Blanchett. Uh, we should have voted on the first uh, amendment. And all in favor? Carried. And Councillors Blanchett and Salt, uh, an amendment to provide a letter to UBCM. Okay. All in favor? Carried. Is there anything further? So all in favor then of the uh, adoption of the agenda for the September 25, 2018 regular meeting of council as amended. Reimer and Blanchett, all in favor? Carried. Agenda item 3.1, adoption of the minutes of the previous regular meeting of council. Motion please, Blanchett and Salt. Are there any errors or omissions? Yes, Councillor Salt. I just want to confirm, um, I had adopted the minutes as amended and it doesn't indicate that on, on these minutes under resolution 261, uh, it just says adopted as presented and I had a, done an amendment okay. so I just want to make sure that the amendment had been captured so yes uh, we have Miss Shepherd and she's going to correct that are there any further errors or omissions hearing none all in favor carried Agenda item 5.1, development cost charge bylaw, recommendation that staff be directed to define eligible developments based on section 563 of the Local Government Act and begin drafting a bylaw to waive or reduce development cost charges for these eligible developments. What is council's wish? Torgerson and Blanchett. So moved. So moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes, Councillor. Uh, just some highlighting, some legislation that's extremely new, uh, just prior to the UBCM uh, convention. Local governments will be needing to report on housing needs uh, for every five years, three years after the regulation comes into force. Mm -hmm. um, we're fortunate that, uh, enough to be working with the Ministry of Housing um, to capture best practices, tools, authorities, case studies, things of that nature, and this is a, a good way of moving forward. And um, this is going to be information that's provided to our administrative staff. In, so in October. In October. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything further? All in favor? Carried. Agenda item 6.1. A recommendation that Councillor Torgerson's appointment to the VARTA board for the 2017 to 2018 term be extended until a new appointment is made at the inaugural council meeting in November. Is your term expiring at the end of October or what is the, re the reason for this? Uh, well, the reason is we have a local government election coming at us. That's correct. However, um, no one is being removed from any of the committees to which they have been appointed until the inaugural meeting. Yeah, I, I, uh, we can adjust that however you like. The ask is until the inaugural uh, meeting. But it, that's the way it always is. Sure. Yes. Councillor Salt? They are indicating though that their AGM is on October 3rd, so I'm presuming it's based okay. on yeah. the timing of their AGM. Okay. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Okay, so I'll take a mover and a Blanchett and uh, Salt and all in favor? Carry. Is there anything from the reading file that Council wishes to bring forward? I um, want to just make particular note of the District of Houston, BC Wildfire Resources. I think it was very well done and very well, um, I wasn't uh, at the plenary session during that particular discussion. I don't know if anybody from council was, but I want to commend the District of Houston for doing that. Yes, Councillor. 
Yeah. It was uh, passed unanimously. Yes, I'm sure. During that plenary Good. session. Thank you. And the general feeling was that uh, the um, municipalities and all taxpayers would support uh, the Ministry of Forests spending all of those millions and millions and millions of tax do dollars instead of putting wildfire out to create employment by clearing up the fuel that causes and you know the fires. Okay, good. Thank you. Administrative reports. We have the accounts payable. A recommendation that this report be received. Salt and Torgerson. Is there anything that council wishes to bring forward? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Northern Development Initiative Grant Writing Support Program 8.2 that staff be directed to apply for the NDIT Grant Writing Support Program for 2019. Reimer and Blanchett. Any discussion? Yes, Councillor Torgerson. Your Worship, uh, the Belmont Community Forest Board uh, has made a verbal request to myself, Councillor Reimer, um, that uh, they would like to receive an in person report. Uh, the, the written report is, is great, mm -hmm. but they would like to ask questions mm -hmm. and, and uh, of the grant writer, um, and they are footing the half the bill for that as well. Okay. So all they have to do is uh, phone the office and talk to the CAO, who can then instruct the grant writer to do so. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's okay with you. Yes, Mr. Fleming. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So all in favor? Carried. And 8.3, NDIT again. That staff be directed to apply for the NDIT Love Northern BC program. And Blanchett and Rana, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor. All right. Agenda item 8.5. We have recommendations required uh, by separate resolution. Recommendation one, that Vailmont Community Futures motion R5620918 and R5630918 from regular minutes September 5th, 2018 be accepted. Your Worship. Uh, yes. I'm, sorry, I don't know how I missed this. Mm -hmm. It should read Vailmont Community mm -hmm. Forest Four. motions. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not, I, I apologize. Community Forest, yeah. 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 yeah, okay, sorry, I missed that too. All right, so that's uh, corrected for Vermont Community Forests. All in favor? Carried. <coughs> that the limited partnership agreement, Vermont Community Forest, verse 4, Aug V? Version. Version 4, okay. August 31, 2018, 0048-4828 be approved for signature. And Reimer and Torgerson. All in favor? Carried. That the limited partnership agreement, VIP final, August 31st, 2018, 0048467878 be approved for signature. Salt and Blanchett. All in favor? Carried. That the shareholder agreement, VIP V2 September 10 to our 2018 00486358 be approved for signature. Torgerson and Reimer. All in favor? Carried. That was number four, correct? Mm -hmm. Now number five, that shareholders agreement, VCF, V3, September 10, 2018, 00486361 be approved for signature. Torgerson and Reimer. Any discussion? Yes, Councillor. I really want to thank uh, members of council for um, for being behind this group uh, as you can see by the various versions of these agreements yes. they were heavily scrutinized yes. by the board and by this council and I can't thank you enough thank yeah. you good and uh, thank you too for Councillor Reimer for uh, arranging for the meetings with Craig Pryor and himself and when I was in Prince George to meet with KPMG for a couple of hours to discuss this so I want to uh, say thanks uh, to both councillors, uh, Reimer and Torgerson, for serving on the Vailmount Community Forest during their tenure as councillors here. All in favor? Carried. Agenda item 8.6, 
UBCM Emergency Social Services Program, recommendation that staff be directed to apply for the UBCM Emergency Social Services Program for 2019. Torgerson and Salt. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. And agenda 9.1, bylaws and policies. The Village of Vailmount Permissive Tax Exemption Bylaw Number 790-2018. Recommendation that the Village of Vailmount Tax Exemption Bylaw Number 790 be given first and second reading. Okay, Torgerson and Blanchette. Any discussion? Yes. And just perhaps notation of the correct yeah. name for the Vailmount Affordable okay. yes. Rental. Okay, yes. And that was uh, corrected from housing to rental. Okay. All in favor? Very. Agenda item 9.2, Village of Vermont Land Use Contract Discharge Bylaw Number 784-2018. That the Village of Vermont Land Use Contract Discharge Bylaw Number 784-2018 be adopted. Blanchett and Torgerson. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Did you have discussion, Council? I was ready for the question. Okay, all in favor? Carried. Village of Vailmount Council Remuneration Bylaw Number 791-2018. Recommendation that the Village of Vailmount Council Remuneration Bylaw Number 791-2018 be given first and second reading. Salt and Torgerson. All in favor? Carried. My 10.1. We're into Council reports. So, Councillor Blanchett. Okay. So I went to, as we all did, UBCM. Um, uh, from the 10th to the 14th, elder care was on the 24th, and we're making some big strides on three different uh, projects with elder care. So really stoked about those. Um, because contrary to our minister meetings, as you know, they didn't go well. Um, so we've redirected our group and we're attacking. Um, and Community Forest had their AGM on the 17th. And I'd just like to take this minute to thank the board and Craig Fire uh, because it's a fantastic board. They do an enormous amount of work for this community. And uh, I just wanted to thank them for everything that they do. So my UBCM uh, report is very short. Um, as usual, it was very crazy, busy, hectic, and terrific all at the same time. And I always come back rejuvenated and, and re-energized. Um, clinics, workshops, minister meetings, pr um, policy sessions, resolution sessions, it's crazy. Um, because housing is in such a dire strait, as we all know, that was geared for a lot of topics um, of discussion. Uh, the government's 30-point plan for housing affordability in British Columbia was key, and it was referenced completely throughout the conference. Every single workshop I went to, they mentioned that 30-point plan, um, and it's quite interesting. It's a good read. Uh, the land use planning for housing that people can afford, um, they want to provide they want municipalities to provide the right supply of houses to match local incomes. Now, what's happened with the housing hub in building partnerships is there's a new threshold for middle income. And middle income has now moved from 70,000 to 150,000. In that bracket is middle income. So if you're middle income, you're $150,000 and below. Okay, so it sort of puts a different light on things when you're trying to get affordable housing and you're trying to find people to build the affordable housing. Okay, um, there's policing in British Columbia as we all know and respect our um, police authorities. Um, achieving affordability, the current policies and future needs of what we can afford um, as a municipality and as a person. And with these new um, middle income thresholds, it's gonna change a lot. Um, partnerships in mental health and addictions. I was really upset about this workshop because it was supposed to cover a wide range of things and all it covered was the overdose crisis in the lower mainland. Um, so that was really disappointing because they could have done a lot with that because every single community in this province is suffering um, and the overdose and the mental health issues are connected. So it would have been nice if they had have done something with that. Cannabis, as we know, is coming full force and we're gonna have to deal with it however we decide to deal with it. Uh, we met with a lot of ministers. We talked about a transition house for the valley. Um, I've just been informed there might be some hope there. 
seniors extended care facility um, like I said our elder care um, the government is not going to help us in any way shape or form get a extended living facility here ever unless we all of a sudden mushroom up to a huge amount so the elder cares uh, committee we've taken on this task to find out different routes that we might be able to go so there's no hope it's not lost but we've just had to switch target left um, Councillor Salt brought up with one of the ministers, and I'll just touch on it quickly, was the hydro cost to our citizens, this tier two stuff. So I'll let you talk about that more. But uh, we had some good meetings, um, some really great uh, discussions, and I was really uh, thankful to have gone with all of you. It was a good, good week. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Blanchett. Councillor Rana. Thank you, Your Worship. September 10th to the 14th uh, was the week of the Un Union of British Columbia Municipalities meetings at Whistler. And the reason that mine is just a little bit more <clears throat> enunciated is because on Monday, as in all the Mondays um, of the UBCM meetings, um, I took part in the agricultural study tour. Um, <clears throat> which is organized by the Ministry of Agriculture, and they've all been fascinating. They, they really have. And while our village itself has little space for agricultural pursuits, we have a lot of surrounding area that is suitable for agricultural pursuits, and it can be used for agricultural endeavors. <clears throat> and two of the four places that we visited this year were especially encouraging and exhilarating not only because they represent something that can be duplicated in our immediate area, but they spoke to the determination, forward-thinking, hard-working, entrepreneurial spirit of some young people in this province who are making a difference. Um, so that they each grow a variety of fruit and vegetables on about three and a half acres of land and are able to make a success of it in one instance, providing vegetables for about 150 families through a sharing program while still having sufficient to sell at local farmers market. And in the other instance, they strictly sell at local farmers market and make a very successful business of it. Um, <clears throat> and they went out, scouted around for opportunities. Um, in the first instance, it's a, it's a single gal, um, <clears throat> that went and made a deal with the owners of the property who weren't using it, and she's developed it. And uh, what a terrific story. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Tuesday through Friday noon was filled with early morning sessions uh, to late evening, from affordable housing to being updated on progress on the energy side and on the forestry side after another year that saw a record number of forest fires and loss of timber supply. And if not in the resolution sessions, I join my fellow councillors in your worship in meetings with Ministry of Health, Transportation, Energy, Rehydro's Tier 2 building. Um, every meeting helps to convey a pertinent message that we are here and we are affected by decisions made in Victoria. And we want to look for ways to make improvements to our quality of living in collaboration and cooperation as we communicate with Victoria. <laughs> Those were, by the way, <laughs> you can borrow that. I think it was used. <laughs> More than time. Yeah. <laughs> it has my, been my privilege to be Council's representative to the Municipal Insurance Association of British Columbia. And this past year was again a successful year and without this association, communities such as Valmont could not afford to exist, considering the amount of liability insurance we would need and the premium we would have to pay in the private market. <coughs> um, our keynote speaker, Arlene Dickinson, shared her life story. Yes. Fascinating to say the least, <laughs> and left me with one impressionable thought. The best thing we can do as a local government is to get all the roadblocks out of the way and have good policy that will allow entrepreneurs to succeed. Thank you, Vermont, for allowing me the privilege of attending. 
And then Monday, September 17th, I was at the AGM of Elmont Community Forest, and it continues to be a strong local provider of business opportunity and jobs, not to mention support for various local groups. One thing, and we can do it now or later after the uh, um, reports, I would like to write a letter to UBCM planners that maybe they could change up the uh, speaker donations because every single speaker donation went to the lower mainland. Not a single donation went to any other part of the province. Yes. So you can make that motion now. I'll make the motion. Okay. 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 Unanimous. See, I see it's unanimous. Okay. <laughs> so you've got that. <laughs> Ms. Shepard, a letter to be written to the Union of BC Municipalities. New president and executive. Okay. Requesting that. Thing. Yes. Requesting that uh, some of those. Uh, um, Recognition or. Well, they give a donation to a charity in lieu of a gift to the to a speaker, mm -hmm. someone who makes a presentation, and uh, they are given um, this um, proof of a coupon mm -hmm. that a charity has received uh, a certain amount as their gift. Okay, so we did that unanimously. Councillor Salt. I'm, I'm not going to get into a, a long-winded, you know, repeat of, of other council. Um, again, thank you very much to the citizens uh, for allowing us to attend UBCM. Um, very productive, but also some, uh, I would say, challenging and frustrating meetings. Um, again, like Councillor Manchet said, uh, one of the m most pertinent topics this whole convention was around housing. Um, not a day went by throughout the whole convention that there wasn't at least one workshop clinic or something about affordable housing. Also another big topic was the cannabis issue mm -hmm. and the challenges every local go government is going to be faced with because we still don't fully know what the federal government is going to be providing us with. So there are things that we're still up in the air with as far as knowing some of the rules and legislations. So th there are definitely challenges and struggles for every local government around the whole cannabis production and uh, distribution issue. So that's something that is very forefront. Um, I did a attend a partial session that was amazing and wonderful and I was disappointed to have to leave but it was for a good cause to attend uh, a ministry meeting uh, around child care and some of the new announcements of the local government for child care funding and partnerships with local governments creating new light, uh, new child care spaces because that also is a, a massive issue throughout all of BC and across Canada as well is child care mm -hmm. uh, an affordable child care so not only housing and um, job creation but in order to draw people to come to jobs in communities you need the housing and you need to have the, the child care and, and there hasn't been that available so there's a new program that was announced that I'm very excited about hopefully um, the village of Elmont being able to possibly work with our local uh, nonprofit society in, in providing more child care spaces for our community to help bring um, more couples in to get the jobs in the community so that was really exciting um, BC Hydro, yes. <laughs> uh, our, our, our meeting with the minister, and, or actually ministry staff, we weren't able to actually meet with the minister. She's on maternity, She's on maternity leave and congratulations to the birth of her yes. child. Um, and, the, and the staff were very good. Um, but of course there were some of the BC Hydro staff in there and they were very cordial and polite. However, um, don't believe that they were truly listening to our concerns and uh, we we did have some conversations after our meeting afterwards that I think we maybe did get through to them a, a wee bit more but I, I think they still don't quite understand the challenges that are faced especially by seniors in all of our communities. I don't think they realize that they, they didn't seem to understand that 
having an equal monthly payment plan didn't make it any easier for seniors to pay their bills when, for example, if their premiums or, or their bills used to be, say, $2,000 throughout a year and now they're like 3000 plus a year, if they couldn't pay 2000 before, how are they possibly going to pay 3000 So they didn't seem to understand that. And when I'm telling them that they're wearing every layer of clothing in their homes because they're freezing, because they can't turn on their heat, because they can't afford the bills, they didn't get it. So we, we still have some more work to do with hydro, and, and I respect... I respect what they're saying, but they need to also listen to what we're saying. So we still have some more work to do there. And um, after our meeting, I think they did. We did make them <laughs> realize that maybe some of what they were saying they they hadn't fully listened to us. So uh, some more work to do there. But it was a, a very I think productive UBCM again. The um, resolution sessions were interesting. There were <laughs> some very big frustrations that some some of us rural communities faced as well with our ambulance services uh, again it seems the lower mainland they control a lot of yes. a lot of the decisions and they just do not listen to us rural and remote communities and our needs and it can be very challenging and frustrating so it's again just trying to make that our voices are heard so uh, again it was um, a productive sometimes frustrating, sometimes rewarding UBCM. So, and also the Community Forest AGM. Mm -hmm. I wish to thank at least the, the board. They've done a tremendous job. Councillors Reimer and Torgerson, thank you. And I would like to request that the Belmont Community Forest perhaps publish uh, in the local newspapers the contributions that they make to the different organizations in the community. I don't think everyone really realizes how much they do contribute mm -hmm. through their different funding sources. So I think it would be great to have that advertised out so that the public do know just how much they are giving back to the yes. community. That's right. So I, I was really pleased to as see well that. As well as employment creation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's it for me. Your Thank Russia. you, Councillor Salt. I get a little alone winded, didn't I? Well, that's okay. <laughs> Councillor Torres. I'll keep it brief. <laughs> I you don't have to eat your words. <laughs> I know, I'm eating. Uh, <laughs> September 4th, I had a Belmont Community Force Board meeting uh, throughout UBCM. Met with ministers, senior staff. Seminars uh, touched on land use, uh, planning for and housing for people that can't afford. And uh, for housing people can't afford, sorry. Uh, professional reliance reviews. Uh, I'll just touch on the, the emergency management meeting we had with uh, with Flynn Rowe and um, <coughs> senior staff from emergency management I think it I think out of all of the meetings I think that was probably the more productive mm -hmm. uh, yeah. they're all over it. Mm -hmm. I mean landscape fire breaks broadcast burning mm -hmm. uh, I think they were we were received there um, and I'll just wrap it up there with the Vermont Community Forest AGM on the 17th and I can't thank UBCM enough, you know, and uh, we still we still have a voice there. I mean, we, they still invite us to attend. Mm -hmm. So we, our membership dues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe we just have to take a shirt stick next time. <clears throat> okay, Councillor Torgerson, thank you. Yes. I'd like to say, I think the reason we were heard through mm -hmm. the through yes. the Emergency Management yes. BC is because of the great work again oh. through the community forest. Yes. I think because of the work that they've done with the fire breaks. Yes, of course. And it certainly helps. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, before I go into giving a report, uh, there is a movement in North Central British Columbia by other municipalities and local government people. <laughs> they too are fed up with the fact that everything um, that affects us, the decisions are made in Victoria and Vancouver, and so there is a new political party registered, and it is called Rural BC. And it has uh, been started by local government elected officials. And I, last I heard, there were about 23 municipalities who have said we're in. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Okay, so yes, Rural BC, a new political party in the province of British Columbia. And uh, that is going to be their um, primary focus, is that attention is paid to the North Central um, Rural BC municipalities. 
because two thirds of the resources of the province of British Columbia are generated up here, which creates wealth down in Vancouver and Victoria. And two years ago, Minister Bill Bennett, Minister of Energy, at a breakfast said, the mayor of Vancouver should acknowledge the fact, at least acknowledge the fact that there are probably 1,000 resource-based offices in the city of Vancouver. It's the scientists, the geologists, and all the lawyers and uh, accountants that um, work with them and all of their office staff and he said all of those people live in the lower mainland mm -hmm. and it has never been acknowledged ever so i said perhaps there should be a rumor started 500 of those offices are moving to prince george and the other 500 to Kamloops. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm not going to report any uh, further on ubcm uh, the uh, as usual it was very um, meaningful and timely. The discussions on the cannabis, we don't know what the federal government, they haven't given anything to municipalities, it's all going to the provinces for now. And um, my information was that when UBCM executive met with uh, Minister James, finance minister, she just said no, no sharing. But we will have policing, we will have all kinds of expenses, and uh, the UBCM, the outgoing president, uh, uh, Wendy Booth told me on um, Friday afternoon in Fernie at uh, CBT board and AGM meeting, she said, we're not giving up. We're going to keep on trying. Yes. So the one meeting that uh, I attended was, uh, it goes back to, I think, January, February, where we brought up the fact of um, our um, Via Mountain District Rescue Service provided by the local volunteers were not reimbursed for the work that they do on provincial highways. And so if council will recall, we passed a resolution here to take it to UBCM. I then took it the subsequent month to the regional district of Fraser Fort George and they endorsed and supported us with the resolution to UBCM. And so we had an appointment with Jennifer Rice, MLA, and she is the parliamentary secretary for emergency preparedness. And she, was, she had no idea that uh, the village taxpayers, the village of Fairmount taxpayers payers, and Area H, from uh, probably Dunster this way, pay for uh, the rescue services on hot provincial highways. And it has nothing to do with the village of Vailmount. And nor does it, excuse me, have anything to do with the regional district. So I gave her some, some comments and uh, I told her that uh, my uh, daughter was uh, attending with me and she was with a Van or Regina Fire Department. She also does 911 and dispatch, etc., with the police. And she said anything that's on the highway gets billed to the Saskatchewan Government Insurance Office would be like our ICBC, okay? and anything that is uh, emergency health gets billed to the health region. So that made the minister smile when she looked at one of her people and she said, oh, she says, we can bill ICBC for this. However, my closing remarks were, the majority of the work of our highway rescue services are responding to vehicle accidents on provincial highways. Provision of these services predominantly relies on the availability of capital assets from a local tax-based service area and the ability to recruit and retain its volunteer base. This past year, we had to increase the tax requisition for the Vail Mountain District Rescue Service by 38% to cover off the costs associated with an increased demand for highway rescue activities. The capital and operating costs for the continued delivery of highway rescue is starting to strain the financial wherewithal in our rural communities. So they will, after some discussion, um, she will be in touch with uh, Jim Martin, uh, the administrator of the Regional District of Fraser Fort George, because uh, this is a regional district function, but Vailmont does get billed. And so I said, if the taxpayers of the village of Fairmount and Area H find out that they are paying for this out of their property tax revenues on your highways, there's going to be trouble. So uh, she did listen and she did take notes and um, I hope that there will be some action 
taken fairly shortly and I know that Jim Martin will continue to keep in touch with us and report on it. Imagine, imagine. I didn't find out about it until sometime around December when I brought it forward to Council in January. And during our meeting, if you will recall with Minister Trevina, they didn't know about uh, the uh, number of accidents that closed the highway for uh, many hours on uh, Highway 16 in the Mount Robson Provincial Park. Now they're aware of it, however, we'll have to, I think it's important for everybody to keep an eye on them to make sure that they do something about it and don't just in one ear and out the other, okay? So I want to express a very genuine and sincere pride for the Vailmont Community Forest Board and uh, their manager, Craig Pryor. They've done a wonderful job and I just uh, feel that they should be the pride of this community in terms of their success. The employment that has been created through them and the ability to support the different charities within the municipality and um, now I'm very proud of them too that they are going to be a separate entity as well and the Vailmount Village is still the shareholder but I agreed with Councillor Reimer when he said shareholders or a shareholder doesn't sit on the board and so I know that they appreciate it very much Councillor Torgerson and Councillor Reimer. Co uh, Councillor Torgerson was referred to as their uh, parliamentary secretary, parliamentary procedural <laughs> and uh, Councillor Torgerson for interpreting the legal terms for them. So and I think, I think that's it, yes, thank you. Okay, so I will take a motion please to um, receive the verbal reports provided by councillors Blanchett, Reimer, Salt and Torgerson and Mayor Townsend. Blanchett and Torgerson, all in favour? Very. I should have asked council, do you have any questions of anybody? On council. I think we communicate with each other. Of course. Okay. <laughs> Good. And um, motion agenda 12 1. That project trial has what? Um, new business? It's new. Yeah, um, I added something, oh, remember? Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so, as we remember, uh, yes. during our UBCM, the scroll that they have up, they always have Valmont spelled wrong. So could we, can we write a letter to UBCM sending a new picture and the correct spelling of our name, please? Our name of our community. Yeah. I uh, have mentioned it to several presidents and it doesn't get changed. Yeah. That's why we think we need to do a Maybe a so letter. let's do a letter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. And it doesn't have to be too polite. <laughs> Okay, well, I won't be signed. You will. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move that. Okay. I'm seconding it. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> Any further comments? All in favor? Carried. No, Council, I did. I mentioned it to um, mm -hmm. the former president. I mentioned it to the current president. It's been mentioned mm -hmm. for a number of years. Yes, I know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, project file tracker, please. Motion that it be received. Okay, Blanchett and Torgerson. Is there any discussion, anything that council wishes to bring forward? No? All in favor of receipt? Carried. One more thing, sure. I just want to remind everyone about the All Candidates Forum happening October 3rd, next Wednesday, at 7 o'clock to 9 at the high school. Mm -hmm. um, I would encourage everybody to come. It's going to be a great night and very informative. And for the candidates running, please come for 645. They've all been contacted and they're all coming. I'll be sitting in the audience. Okay. <laughs> No poking or Be gentle on us. Don't threaten me. Yeah. <laughs> I won't say a word. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. So, um, 13.1, there's no motion required there. Just the calendar of events. And 14.1, uh, public comment. Is there anyone who wishes to make public comment? Okay. Okay, we'll go on then to uh, 15.1. Notice to proceed to in-camera. That council proceed to an in-camera council meeting for consideration of three items for section 981C of the community charter to discuss matters related to neighbor relations or other employee relations. And uh, yes, Councillor Salt. I'm You're moving nice. it, okay, <laughs> Councillor Blanchett. All in favor? Carried.
Okay. Well, thanks.